Hey everyone, so I wanted to make a video about the six criteria air pollutants because this is one of the most common topics on the AP exam. So the six criteria air pollutants, they were established by the Clean Air Act. So this is during the 19, you know, 1960s, when, uh, 1970s, when Richard Nixon is president. And it basically established uh, what they call ambient air levels or average ambient levels for six of these things called criteria air pollutants. So here they are, first one, sulfur dioxide, nitrogen oxide. So nitrogen oxides are like NO2 or NO3 or NO, and it's just a generally a class of them. All right, so ozone is O3, and it's tropospheric ozone. That is what is known as the bad ozone. Lead is PB, carbon monoxide is CO, and then particulates, there's two different types. There's PM2.5 and PM10. All right, so every single day around the United States, different cities are measuring the concentrations of all of these. And if they don't meet the, the, you know, the standards or whatever for a couple of days, then they get put on an improvement plan by the Environmental Protection Agency. So after the Clean Air Act was passed and they have these six criteria air pollutants, the only two that really exceed the, the daily limits or whatever is ozone, and then particulates. And the reason for ozone is because people drive so many cars. And then for particulates, the reason for this one is because um, anything like wind, uh, tree pollen, really anything can stir up these particulates. All right, so I want to talk about each one of them. I want to talk about the sources. I want to talk about human health impacts and environmental impacts of each one. So let's go ahead and get started with the first one, which is sulfur dioxide. All right, so we've got sulfur dioxide. Its abbreviation is SO2. So the sources for sulfur dioxide are things uh, like burning fossil fuels. So if you burn uh, coal, you burn gasoline, you burn diesel, you're also going to be emitting this uh, sulfur dioxide into the air. So what happens is, is there's trace impurities of sulfur in the carbon or in the fossil fuel. And whenever you burn it, it gets bonded to this oxygen and causes SO2 to form. All right, sulfur dioxide, SO2. Make sure you know the abbreviations for each one of these. All right, so what are some human health impacts? So the first one that we're always going to talk about, it aggravates asthma. It makes asthma worse. Asthma is this condition where your, uh, basically the, the tubes in your lungs, they, they start uh, constricting. And it's really hard for you to breathe and get air inside your lungs. And people sometimes they are they are either born with this, they can develop asthma throughout their lifetime. Some people have sports induced asthma, which is when they exercise, they have asthma. Asthma is usually pretty easily treated with like an inhaler or some sort of medicine like that. Uh, so if you breathe in the sulfur dioxide, it's gonna aggravate asthmatics, you're gonna have some wheezing and cough, and it's gonna induce this thing called shortness of breath. And shortness of breath is when you feel like you can't get your breath. You start wheezing. You start wheezing like that, and it feels like you can't really get a good breath or you can't breathe. All right, so uh, environmental impacts. Uh, SO2 is going to lead to acid rain. So it leads to acid precipitation. So acid precipitation can include acid rain. It can be acid fog. It can be uh, acid snow, which actually is a thing. All right, and the acid precipitation is going to lower the pH of soil, ponds, rivers, lakes, streams, all those different waterways and the soil. All right, so looking down here, the SO2 is emitted into the atmosphere, and the SO2 is sulfur dioxide. There are these things called oxidants in the atmosphere, and I just put oxidants in the atmosphere because they're a general class of, of contaminants. All right, whenever they, this SO2 gets oxidized and it mixes with hydrogen and stuff like that in the atmosphere, it becomes H2SO4, and that is sulfuric acid. So sulfuric acid is not good. Uh, as it you know, falls down to the Earth's surface, it lowers the pH of uh, the soil, which then causes the CEC, the cation exchange capacity, to go down. And then once the CEC goes down, the soil becomes more and more infertile and all that kind of stuff. So it's really not good for the soil. It's also going to cause a decrease in the pH of ponds, rivers, lakes, and stuff like that. So usually the water in a, in a pond or a stream or something is, is 6.5 or something like that. But after you add all this acid, it can go down to uh, 4. And after below 4, there's really virtually no life in the river or the stream. 
All right, so sulfur dioxides, um, acid precipitation, they form sulfuric acid. So that's the first of the six criteria air pollutants. All right, the next one I want to talk about is NOx or nitrogen oxides or NOx. All right, so these NOx, all right, sources, let's talk about some sources of it. All right, and the most common one, cars burning gasoline, burning coal, um, smelters, so smelters, if you don't know, smelters are where they take like a couple of metals, they mix them all together and they heat them up and stuff like that. Um, smoking cigarettes, especially inside, um, if your parents smoke inside, they're probably emitting these nitrous oxides. Gas stoves, kerosene heaters, and, and burning wood like in a fireplace all can produce these, these nitrous oxides, these NOx. Alright, so why are these NOx, why are they, um, they bad, that kind of thing? Again, it's going to aggravate your, your asthmatics. So people who you know can't breathe normally um, without their inhaler or something like that, it's going to aggravate their breathing problems already. It's going to lead to coughing and choking. So people are going to start hacking up along whenever they get you know outside with this NOx. And again, the most common one is, is cars burning gasoline. So if you've ever had a car drive by you and it smells you know kind of sweet or something like that, you're most likely smelling a mixture of nitrogen oxides and ozone. All right, after a, a while of smelling this, you'll probably start to have some nausea, a headache, and then you'll have difficulty breathing. If you have extended exposure to it, like let's say that you, uh, you, know, you work outside along a highway for eight hours a day, and it's a really busy highway, then extended exposure can lead to uh, cardiovascular disease or cardiovascular problems. So it's, it's basically going to lead to problems with your heart and your breathing and stuff like that. So again, NOx is a general category for all the nitrogen oxides. The X can be any number. The most common, nitrogen dioxide and nitrogen monoxide. All right, these can also be emitted from uh, waterlogged soil, and it, it is a greenhouse gas. All right, so what happens whenever you have these in the environment? What are some environmental impacts or environmental effects of this? All right, the first one is that these can also lead to acid precipitation again. So we've got these NOx, just like sulfur dioxide, we've got these NOx, the NOx. Nitrogen oxides are reacting with these oxidants in the atmosphere, and they're producing this nitric acid. So the nitric acid is going to lower the pH of uh, soil, rivers, streams, and stuff like that. And it's going to make the, the aquatic environment un inhospitable, can't say that word, and it's also going to lead to a decrease in the pH of the soil, which is going to make the CEC go down, and then you can't grow any crops there. So it's, it's really not that great. All right, so NOx and uh, or NOx and sulfur dioxide, those are both leading to acid precipitation or acid rain. All right, also I want to talk about uh, nitrogen oxides and how they form photochemical smog. All right, so we've got these nitrogen oxides, which are, this in this case, it's NO2. And photochemical smog, if you haven't ever, you know, been to a large city or something like that, is when you look at a city, you know, from the distance, or you're in the city and there's a, a reddish, like, brown haze just kind of lingering over the city. And what happens is, is the, there's a buildup of ozone and nitrogen oxides and these things called VOCs, which I'll talk about here in a second. And so basically what is happening is, is this here is NO2 and it's reacting with sunlight and this is what happens just naturally and this is not going to cause the buildup of, of ozone in these VOCs. Alright so if we've got this NO2 it gets hit by some sunlight it's going to break apart into NO and an O at just one oxygen so this is nitrogen monoxide and this is just one O. The O then reacts with O2 which is just diatomic oxygen gas which is what we're breathing in right now and this O from here reacts with this and forms O3. The O3, after it lingers in the atmosphere for a little bit, then goes back to react with this NO that was left over here. So the O3 reacts with the nitrogen monoxide. And then it breaks apart into NO2 and O2. And this whole process gets to just continue. All right, so this is natural. This is what happens in, in you know, everyday life in, in the atmosphere, in the troposphere and also in the stratosphere, which we'll talk about more later. All right, so we talked about how nitrogen oxides can lead to the production of this thing called ozone. 
All right, and there are two different types of ozone. So the first type of ozone I want to talk about is uh, tropospheric ozone. All right, so this tropospheric ozone is actually a, a bad thing. All right, so tropospheric ozone is this pale blue gas, and it's created as a secondary pollutant from the creation or the emission of nitrogen oxides, or NOx. All right, so from earlier, the NOx is being produced from things like uh, cars burning gasoline, burning coal, cigarettes, stuff like that. And I'll show you how in a second that the ozone, or I showed you how the ozone was created and that kind of thing. So tropospheric ozone is the bad ozone. All right, tropospheric ozone, bad ozone. This is the one that's going to aggravate your asthma and stuff like that. Stratospheric ozone, on the other hand, is the good ozone. So I tried to make, you know, good, bad. So it's the good ozone. They're both O3. I wanted you to know that. They're both O3, but it's just depending on where they are. So the troposphere is the uh, zone of the atmosphere that we live in. The stratosphere is the one that's above us. All right, stratospheric ozone is the one that protects us from harmful UVA, I mean UVB and UVC rays. All right, so let's talk about some human health impacts. And again, the most common one you're going to have is it aggravates your asthmatics or you're going to aggravate people who have asthma already. They already have breathing trouble. It's also going to cause choking, coughing, and this O3, this this pale blue gas is relatively common to oxidize your lungs. And when I say oxidize your lungs, it's just going around inside your lungs and just stealing electrons from stuff. It doesn't care where it gets them from. And eventually this whole thing is going to reduce your lung function. Um, so again, it can also oxidize things like plants, uh, rubber, metal, all kinds of stuff like that. So it's a really unstable gas that's just basically be trying to steal electrons from everywhere. All right. So let's talk about this next part. It says environmental impacts. It leads to the formation of photochemical smog, which is the red-brown smog, with VOCs. All right, so there's two different types of smog. There's the red-brown smog, which is known as photochemical smog, and then there's the gray smog, which is known as sulfurous smog. So the one that, that we're talking about with ozone is photochemical smog, or the red-brown smog. All right, so what happens is, is whenever there are VOCs, or volatile organic compounds, in the atmosphere, you know, with ozone and with these nitrogen oxides, these VOCs are going to block the conversion of ozone back into nitrogen oxides and stuff like that in O2 gas. And I've got a picture down here at the bottom that I'll show you here in a second. But what are these VOCs? What are some examples of them? So VOCs are organic chemicals. They go from a liquid to a gas phase really easy. So if you just send them out in a, like an open container, kind of like you would for acetone or um, rubbing alcohol, kerosene, diesel, gasoline, they just go to a fume into a gaseous phase. All right, so let's talk about what happens when we get these nitrogen oxides mixing with ozone and these photochemical oxidants. All right, so again, this is the whole thing where we have NO2. It's being produced by cars, or it can be produced by natural sources. It reacts with the sunlight, and it forms nitrogen oxide, or nitrogen monoxide, and an oxygen atom. All right, this O then goes to react with an O2 to form O3. But remember, in our previous one, the O3 went back and reacted with this NO, and then it, it basically broke down and broke apart. Well, that's not happening this time because of these VOCs. So, like I said earlier, the VOCs are going up into the atmosphere. They're reacting with these nitrogen monoxides, and they're forming these things called photochemical oxidants. The buildup of these two, the O3, which is ozone, and the photochemical oxidants, is creating this red-brown smog, this photochemical smog. All right, and that's really an important process that you should probably know. You should probably know how it occurs naturally. So this is the whole process of ozone being created naturally and it breaking itself down. This is an example of when the ozone just builds up because of these VOCs and it creates the photochemical smog. I believe that's a free response question that's on the test. All right, so we've talked about three different uh, photochemical, I mean not photochemical, uh, criteria air pollutants. All right, so the next one I want to talk about is lead. All right, and lead is uh, relatively well known. It's been around since you know the time of the Romans. They used to use it for for money and stuff like that. So it's a heavy metal that's also found in water as a drinking water contaminant. So if you've ever heard of Flint, Michigan, and all that kind of stuff, 
it's basically what they would call a neurotoxin. It's basically going to deprive your, your brain of you know, different things. So what are some sources? Uh, back in the day, in the 1960s and you know, 1950s, they used to add lead to gasoline. That's why it was called leaded gasoline. I know some of you probably have read this as leaded gasoline, but it's not. It's leaded gasoline. All right, so leaded paint. Uh, and what happens is, is the gasoline would leak out of people's cars and get into the soil, and then it would be emitted into the atmosphere, you know, from wind or something like that. Leaded paint, if your house was built in the 1950s, 60s, or 70s, your, your house probably has some lead paint. If your house does have lead paint, they have to, uh, you know, come in and, you know, scrape all off the walls and all that kind of stuff, and it's a very intensive process. Uh, a couple of years ago, they also found that children's toys from China were actually uh, painted with lead-based paint, which was really scary because kids are putting these like these toys in their mouth and they're getting lead. Uh, it's also found naturally in the soil, so this is just you know natural. It's just existing, and it can be sometimes emitted into the air from wind or dust storms or a tornado or something like that. So what is, if you're exposed to this lead, what is it causing? Usually it impairs your, your central nervous system. It's, it's called a neuro, neurotoxin. It affects your ability to focus. It can cause these things uh, called learning disabilities. Um, an example is uh, like dyslexia or dysgraphia. Dyslexia is where you, you, know, you try to read and you see the page and the words appear scrambled or, or stuff like that. ADHD is an attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. They've linked a couple of that, a couple of uh, cases of those to being exposed to lead. And it can also, if you have severe lead poisoning, it can cause uh, mental retardation, which is which is really sad. Um, so environmental impacts. What are the environmental impacts? There aren't really any known, but all mammals and birds are really susceptible to lead poisoning. Most of the time, it's from uh, lead bullets or lead shot, they call it, which is where they put lead into the uh, into the bullets. Why? Not really sure, but they uh, get into the the bloodstream of these these animals from eating other things and stuff like that. And then uh, a lot of bald eagles have been uh, poisoned by lead by, by basically eating things that have been exposed to, to lead from lead shot. All right, so the next one I want to talk about is particulates. And particulates, there are two different sizes. The first size we're going to talk about is 2.5, and the next one is, is 10. So the 2.5 is going to be your, your really tiny particles, like your chemicals, like heavy metals, like lead that are in the air, um, mercury. Uh, it's also going to be other organic chemicals that are that are bad for you. The 10 microns is going to be things like uh, dust, pollen, uh, your mold spores, uh, sand that gets you know kicked up into the air by a windstorm, all that stuff, etc. Uh, heavy metals are in the 2.5 range. All of this is the 10 range, the PM10. Uh, PM2.5 is worse than PM10, and the reason for that is that the PM2.5 they go deeper into your lungs. And you try to hack them up, you try to, you know, you cough them up, but these most likely are never coming out of your lungs ever. These you might be able to hack up or something, you know, you may be able to filter them out with the, um, the cilia or, that are inside your lungs, that kind of thing. Alright, so what are some sources of these? These can, these can happen or can be emitted from literally anything. Uh, natural activities like a forest fire, a volcanic eruption, that will release particulates into the air. Um, sometimes... Uh, they will have to, uh, you know, issue a, a red alert thing for, you know, people with asthma. Don't go outside because it's, you know, it's windy or there's a lot of pollen out and it's really hard for people to breathe. Another really good example is construction. Construction serves up a ton of particulates and puts them into the air. All right, and then finally we've got uh, human health impacts and environmental impacts. So human health impacts, again, it's going to aggravate your asthmatics. Uh, repeated exposure can cause lung cancer give you long-term impacts uh, like bronchitis, like a chronic bronchitis or a chronic pneumonia. Um, environmental impacts, there aren't really that many. It just decreases visibility. Um, animals can't see, um, you know, stuff like that. All right, so we've covered five of them. We've covered, uh, we've, we covered sulfur dioxide. We covered nitrogen oxides. We call it, covered ozone. We covered lead. We've got particulates. The last one we want to talk about is uh, carbon monoxide. So carbon monoxide is the one that will kill you. It will legitimately kill you. All right, so carbon monoxide is CO, 
And ba basically, its mechanism of toxicity, or how does it kill you, it suffocates you from the inside out. So what carbon monoxide does is it bonds to your hemoglobin that's in your blood that's responsible for transporting oxygen. So instead of transporting oxygen, it actually is transporting this carbon monoxide and delivering it to all your, you know, your tissues, which is not good. All right, so where are we going to get this carbon monoxide from? So anywhere you have incomplete combustion or burning things. So if you're, you're, you know, you're burning a kerosene heater, you've got a wood stove, you've got a fireplace inside your house, and that's the only thing you're using to heat your house, and you're using a ton of it, you're most likely going to have a ton of this carbon monoxide build up inside your house. And again, it's, it will kill you, and it makes you feel like sleepy. So some people will go to bed with like a kerosene heater on, and then they just, they never wake up, and you'll, you'll hear tons of news stories about people who, you know, they say, if you have a kerosene heater or a wood stove or a fireplace, please get a carbon monoxide detector because it's colorless, it's odorless. You really can't detect it at all. So human health impacts, asphyxiation, I don't know if I spelled that right, but an eventual death. But if it doesn't kill you, so like let's say you, you, know, you get out of the area before it kills you, you can have some pretty severe brain damage from you know, the lack of oxygen to your brain. They call the lack of oxygen to your brain, they call it hypoxia, and it can cause this thing called uh, ischemia. Alright, so environmental impacts, really none, besides, you know, if animals, you know, they breathe it in, it's going to kill them too, especially mammals, um, that kind of thing. Uh, so if you have any questions about the six criteria air pollutants, I hope this video helped. Um, a lot of people have asked me, they say, okay, so is the air any cleaner since we've instituted this? It, yeah, the answer is yes. We have one of the, you know, the cleanest airs in the world. Um, the only problem is, is that a ton of other countries haven't instituted these kinds of things, like in Asia or Africa, and the pollution just moves across the, you know, the oceans and comes to the United States. All right, so again, if you have any questions, please let me know. Thanks for watching this video.